Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Uh, today's episode is about SpaceX's IFT-1, SpaceX's IFT-2, and also the upcoming IFT-3 launch, Starbase, environmental groups, and the Federal Aviation Administration, and how these environmental groups are contesting what's been happening down at Starbase. Now, organizations like the Center for Biological Diversity took a step forward, and they're challenging the FAA over its environmental oversight of SpaceX's Starship launches from Boca Chica Starbase, Texas. Now, this is building on an earlier suit right after the first launch in April, the IFT-1 launch. Now, it seems that they're not quite convinced that the FAA is taking a close enough look at the environmental stakes down at Starbase. Now, they claim that both the FAA and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service haven't thoroughly evaluated the environmental impacts of the launches from Starbase. Now, according to these groups, it's a clear oversight of what's required by the National Environmental Policy Act. A specific point of contention is the review of SpaceX's pad deluge system designed to protect the launch pad. Now, the environmental groups, however, argue that this review was way too narrow, overlooking broader ecological effects. And despite this, the Fish and Wildlife Service concluded that this system wouldn't significantly harm the environment at Boca Chica. Jared Margolis from the Center for Biological Diversity isn't holding back, though. He's openly criticizing the FAA and the FWS, saying failing to do an in-depth environmental review is letting SpaceX keep launching the world's largest rockets that repeatedly explode shows a shocking disregard for wildlife and communities. Now, clearly, he's calling for more thorough environmental assessments, highlighting potential risks to local ecosystems and communities. Now, let's talk about NASA's view of this. Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy addressed the importance of Starship for the Artemis Lunar Program at a Senate hearing. She mentioned ongoing discussions with environmental regulators. And Melroy's point, the space exploration stuff is new territory for everybody involved, including environmental agencies, especially down at Boca Chica, because Starbase is kind of new. And there's also senators involved. Senator Ted Cruz voiced his frustration over the delays caused by environmental reviews at the same hearing. He labeled these delays asinine, pointing out that they're holding back U.S. competitiveness in space against China, and Cruz is calling for more reasonable application of environmental laws aiming to balance ecological concerns with the pace of space exploration. Now, Kevin Coleman from the FAA defended this. Responding to Cruz, he emphasized the necessities of these reviews, saying they're all about following U.S. law and protecting the environment. It's clear that the FAA is trying to walk a tightrope here between legal compliance and fostering new space innovation. SpaceX works fast, and the FAA has to catch up. Now, the FAA is also knee-deep in an investigation into the second Starship launch, which didn't exactly go according to plan, the IFT-2 launch. Coleman reported that the investigation is moving along as expected, but the outcome remains to be seen. And as for SpaceX's plan, Elon is, of course, eager to launch by the end of this year, but the FAA isn't rushing their investigation or the issuing of a new launch license. It's a classic case of hurry up and wait. Elon wants to go fast. He wants everything ready by the end of this year, and he said the hardware will be ready by December 29th. They want to get this thing stacked by Christmas, actually. Hey, do me a favor. Go down to the comments section. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think the FAA and the FWS and SpaceX are right? Or do you think these environmental groups have a point? Just let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like button. And also, please hit the subscribe button with maximum dynamic pressure. Because if you hit that sub button, it's not just me you're helping out. You're helping out yourself because YouTube will see that. And then they'll start feeding you other space flight content that you like, SpaceX content, etc. From other creators that aren't just me. So you're going to get some other cool stuff if you do that. So please subscribe, like, comment, all those things. Thank you so much. Now let's get back to the content. So Kathy Leaders, who's now managing SpaceX's Starbase, suggests a more cautious timeline for the next launch, though. Eyeing first quarter, early 2024. It seems there's a recognition that these processes can't be rushed, especially with so much on the line here. Now, the legal tussle between the FAA, the FWS, is more than just a spat over specific launches. It's a debate over environmental stewardship, though. In an era of groundbreaking space tech, and the lawsuit claims that the FAA hasn't fully embraced its environmental responsibilities, especially regarding public engagement. Now, let's rewind to the Starship launch in April, which is really at the center of all of this. The explosion caused notable environmental damage, raising 
serious questions about the ecological footprint of SpaceX's activities. It's these kinds of incidents that are fueling this debate. There was a rock tornado under the launch pad. Concrete was strewn all over the environment, and people were mad about it. Now, Margolis is doubling down on his concerns. He pointed out regulators are playing Russian roulette with one of the most critical and sensitive habitats for migratory birds in our country. It's a strong statement that underscores the perceived risks of these launches and the need for comprehensive environmental reviews. He's also spotlighting the potential conflict between tech advancement and environmental conservation. Margolis said SpaceX should not be given free reign to use this amazing area as a sacrifice zone. It's a powerful critique, highlighting the potential consequences of prioritizing technology over our environment and the community as a whole. Now, Margolis further suggests that our current environmental laws might not be up to the task of dealing with challenges posed by private space ventures like SpaceX's Starship. He's advocating for a more comprehensive approach to environmental management in light of these technological advancements. Now, his perspective is crucial in the broader conversation about balancing tech progress with also protecting our planet, because we have to do both. And Margolis is pushing for evolving regulatory practices, ensuring that technological leaps don't come at the expense of environmental conservation. Now, it's not about specific launches for these people. It's a conversation about how we navigate the complexities of technological advancements and ecological preservation. It's about finding a middle ground and how they all have to coexist. SpaceX, the FAA, Fish and Wildlife Service, and also these environmental groups. Now, during the second test flight of SpaceX Starship, which took place on November 18th, it faced a pretty significant setback. The launch initially seemed very successful, with the Starship lifting off without damaging the launch pad, a notable improvement from the previous test, IFT-1. However, the flight ended dramatically with both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship upper stage experiencing catastrophic failures. Now, the Super Heavy booster exploded shortly after the stage separation. It's a major incident in the test, but it was deemed a success. Following this, the Starship's flight termination system was activated near the end of the powered phase, leading to its destruction as well. Now, this sequence of events marked a significant challenge for SpaceX's Starship, but it's also very complex for the um, environmental groups involved and the FAA. Now, the aftermath of the Starship's second test flight prompted an extensive investigation led by SpaceX under the oversight of the FAA. And this investigation aimed to determine the causes behind the destruction of both the booster and the upper stage. Kevin Coleman, the FAA Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, also commented on the progress of this probe, noting that it was proceeding as expected and without major surprises. And the outcomes of this investigation are crucial for SpaceX's future Starship launches, as they will inform the necessary modifications and the safety measures to be implemented for future launches. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, do you think that SpaceX is in the right here and they should have free reign to do whatever they want to do down at Starbase whenever they want to do it? Or do you think these environmental groups have a point? Do you think it's okay for them to push back against the Fish and Wildlife Service and the FAA and SpaceX for these launches? Let me down down in the comments, but I think we're going to have a great discussion. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I really do appreciate you. Please give this a thumbs up and also a, um, you know, a sub if you like this kind of content. So you've watched this far, might as well give it a little thumbs up. It's free and subscriptions are free too. So hit that sub button with maximum dynamic pressure and I will see you in the next one. Here we go. Uh, thank you so much for watching today. There you go. There's a couple of videos over there for you to check out. And if you're inclined, click on one of them and you'll learn more about SpaceX and Starship.